Okay, so today we're going to be looking at the pituitary gland. Uh, let me write that over here, pituitary gland. Um, first, we want to look at just a general location of the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland is um, located, so say this is a pituitary gland, like a cross section. Okay, um, right above it is the optic chiasm. So this is the optic chiasm. And right below it, it's kind of, uh, we have what we call the uh, cella tersica. So this right here is going to be the cella tersica. And the cella tersica is going to be right above the uh, sphenoid bone. So these are your uh, sphenoid sinus. Uh, and this, this location is uh, fairly important because if, whenever there is uh, any type of adenoma or tumor, uh, it's not going to grow down. It's going to actually grow. It's, it's not going to grow down. It's actually going to grow up, and that's going to cause impingement of the optic chiasm, and that can lead to uh, visual disturbances. Um, if we look at it from the sagittal cross section, um, it'll look more like this. So you have the optic chiasm here. It's going to go down the infundibulum, and then you're going to get a little indentation there, and then it's going to go up that way. Now. Here, this is the hypothalamus. And here we have this right here is going to be the optic chiasm. So this is going to be the optic chiasm running right above the um, pituitary gland. Here, as we work our way down, this is all this is known as infundibulum. Um, and for some reason it's also called the tabes. Okay, now the pituitary gland is split into two. You have a posterior portion and an anterior portion. The posterior portion is also known as a neuro hypothesis, and the anterior portion is known as the adeno hypothesis. Uh, the anterior portion is more glandular, whereas the posterior portion. Uh, is more uh, of nervous tissue. Now, um, let's first focus on the posterior portion because we can get through that pretty quickly. Um, it is controlled uh, by two places in the hypothalamus. One over here, uh, this is known as the supraoptic supra nuclei. Now, the, um, the hormone uh, ADH is actually made here and it goes down through the infundibulum into the uh, posterior uh, hypothalamus and then ADH is secreted and obviously ADH is going to go over to the kidneys. So within the supraoptic nuclei um, what you have is you have uh, sodium, receptor, uh, sodium receptors uh, which are looking for uh, the osmolality, right? So it's looking for the osmolality of the, of the blood, and of course, um, if it's too low, it's going to secrete ADH so that you can retain more of that. Now, um, the other thing that controls the posterior hypothalamus, sorry, the posterior uh, pituitary gland, is going to be the paraventricular nuclei. Paraventricular nuclei is more associated with oxytocin. Now again, the oxytocin is made here, and then it travels down here, and then the oxytocin is secreted into the uterus where it can cause contractions, or into the breast where it can cause milk ejection. So that's your uh, that's that's your two basically your two hormones, oxytocin and ADH, which is in the posterior. Now. In the anterior, before we begin, let's just talk a little bit about, uh, begin with the hormones, let's just talk about how it's regulated. Now, with um, the anterior uh, pituitary, there, there's going to be a two-stage um, vessel system. So you have vessels up here, which kind of go around here, and then they go down, down all the way down, and then you have some more vessels that come off here. Now over here, this is called the superior uh, hypophysial artery, and this is called the inferior 
hypophyseal artery. And here, this is going to be the trabecular artery. So what happens is the hypothalamus is going to make hormones, or not necessarily hormones, but trophic factors here. They're going to travel down here, and there's, of course, there's going to be um, many glands here, so you can have glands uh, here. And these hormones are going to activate these glands to secrete the particular hormone that they have. Now, these glands, there can be two types. There can be basophils, which are blue. So these are your basophils. And there can be acidophils, which, just go over that, which are red. Now, the basophils um, are going to have three types of... Uh, not three, but uh, four types of hormones. Uh, they're going to be secreting. Uh, I use a, I use a mnemonic B flat because they secrete FSH, LH, ACTH, and TSH. Whereas the um, acidophils, uh, you're going to be secreting more of the growth hormone and prolactin. And this just go, corresponds to what color they are when it's stained in the microscope. Now let's just kind of um, continue with all the different hormones. So what we're going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a little diagram. So this is going to be the hypothalamus, and here we're going to have the. So that's going to be this is going to be the anterior pituitary, and this is going to be the hypothalamus. So the hypothalamus is going to be secreting some trophic hormones, which going to which are going to go through the trabecular arteries into the uh, and, and then go into the um, anterior pituitary, which is going to secrete hormones, which goes into the inferior hypophysial artery. So one of the um, hormones that uh, the, hypo, the hypothalamus secretes is going to be GnRH. It secretes dopamine, TRH, which is a thyrotropic releasing hormone. GHRH, which is a uh, growth hormone releasing hormone, and CRH, which is corticotropic releasing hormone. Um, and down here, we uh, it's going to be FSH and LH, of course, um, prolactin, TSH, which is thyroid stimulating hormone, GH, which is growth hormone, uh, adrenocorticotropic hormone. Now, um, with regards to GnRH, uh, GnRH activates uh, FSH and LH. Okay, now dopamine actually inhibits prolactin, and prolactin in turn inhibits GnRH. Now, uh, uh, thyroxine releasing hormone activates TSH, but it also activates prolactin. Okay, and growth hormone releasing hormone is going to activate uh, growth hormone and corticotropin releasing hormone is going to activate ACTH but at, at the same time it activates melanocytes and it activates beta endorphins so key thing there now um, so as you see right now all we have is just one inhibitory hormone which is dopamine and obviously prolactin is going to inhibit uh, uh, but there is another um, inhibiting hormone called somatostatin Uh, somatostatin inhibits TSH and it also inhibits GH. So, in other words, the only thing that really doesn't have any type of inhibitory action from the hypothalamus is going to be the ACTH. Uh, but it does, of course, have other uh, feedback mechanisms uh, as well.